Hello, Search here from the Backyard Driving Range. We have a class question from Gail Jones that she sent in to customer service, and it's, it's uh, short and sweet to the point, but I think it's a really good question. Gail asks, how do you get your mental game back after a bad round in a tournament? Okay. Well, tournament, it would be even more important than just a regular daily round, but it's good for any round, and especially tournament rounds. How do you get your mental rule, get your, get it back? Okay, first thing I'm going to start off with is a thing that most of you who've been on the site for a while know. I have these rules or secrets that I call them. Uh, there's five of them, and and four of them involve something to do with the golf swing. One, two, three, and four are all about things in the golf swing. All right, like number one is golf's a game of angles. The fewer the better. That's why we don't have wrist cock in the swing. All right, so we're going to skip those four because they're about to swing right now, and all of this is in anywhere in the manuals or videos you. But I'm going to go to rule number five, and rule number five states when you hit a bad shot or maybe after a round and you start thinking about your round and you're starting to wonder, you know, what did I do wrong? What happened out there? Especially when you're thinking, what did I do wrong? The answer is, who cares? Do the next one right. For starters, if you get into that scenario, because if you if you go back and think about the bad round you played and you started saying, wow, what am I doing wrong? I mean, uh, am I picking my head up? Am I moving on the ball? I chunked one. Am I hanging back? Uh, uh, that's the wrong attitude. That's, that's, the problem could be any one of, of the number of leaves I got on this tree are combinations of things. All right? You don't have the time on the golf course to figure that out. But you do know what a good peak performance grip, stance, posture, alignment, setup is, and you know what the rules of the swing is, in the mid and up the tree and three-quarter limited turn, all those things. And by now, if you've been working on your swing, you should have some, some of them that would really pop out to you that, that you know, tendency, if you think about it this way, you'll know that, oh, when I start, when I start going bad, I, 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 I've done my shadow swing and I can see I'm, I'm dropping my head, so I'm not keeping my head still or whatever. But the point is, is you've at least identified it and you know what it is. But the, again, it comes back to the key. You're not groping around in the dock trying to find a light switch. All right? You're not over here, you know, cracking open a fortune cookie and hoping the answer is in that cookie. All right? Or, you know, or like pulling that leaf and say, okay, what is it? No. Think about what you need to do to do it right. So now you talk after the round. So let's say you even did some good, some good trying to help yourself after the round. Uh, during the round and so okay I got to get back to my good posture and I make sure my alignment's correct and all that other stuff all right so that's good positive thinking but it didn't still really help enough okay well it might be uh, there was frustration I already said it and whatever those things but ultimately in the end what you should be doing after every round not only a tournament round but after you play but especially in tournaments is you should be doing your stats going over your round how many fairways did you hit how many greens did you hit how many putts did you have keep track of maybe the length of the putts too like if my, you know, I always believe in walking your putts off. My first putt was 30 feet. I putted it up to two feet and made it. So you write down two putts and you write down 30 slash, the way I do it, I write 30 slash two. So if I had a second number, that means I didn't make the 30 footer. And if, when, I put a, when I put the two there, if I don't have another slash with another number, that means I made the two footer. So find your own, your own bookkeeping system to learn that and, and maybe start a little book or something or go to your computer and do it. And eventually, very soon, when we get uh, when we get our members uh, members uh, new site up, which is hopefully not too far away, we're going to have a great stat system in there, and it's going to have about maybe three levels, so you could get whatever amount of, of stats you want to keep, how intensely and deeply you want to go. But you go over your stats, that'll start revealing something. Because sometimes when you're playing, you might not realize that wow, I blocked every shot, every one of my bad shots was a block to the right. Or say you're saying, you say saying you look at the one the greens you miss. And, and you notice that. And if you keep track on your greens, where do you miss them? Short, right, left, long, or whatever. And, and, and where are you missing them? You can say short, RR, right, rough. All right, that means you miss a short, right, rough. Or short, RT, right, RRB, right bunker, left bunker. I think many, many amateurs will find out they will be, if you do that stat alone, you're going to find out, you're going to be flabbergasted how many greens you miss short. It's amazing, and you want to talk to most tour players who play in pro they tell you the number one thing is golfers under club ridic ridiculously under club. And, and that's how you find out. Now, again, you might say, well, I didn't hit the ball that good today, but if you're, in most cases, if you hit it, just miss it a little bit and you got enough club, you still should catch some part of the green. But when you're barely getting in the front bunkers or just lining in the middle of them, most front bunkers, the middle of the front bunker to even 
even the front center of a green is going to be at least 10 to 15 yards off, that's a club and a half. Okay? Another one you can do is keep track of your putting, and when you have breaking putts, track how many times you, you miss a putt. If you miss the putt, you miss it where you're on the high side of the hole versus the low side. A high side putt will, because it's above the hole, turning, putting to the hole, rolling to the hole, if you, if you come up short or you hopefully will not and go by the hole, it'll always be closer than a putt that never reached the hole because it's a putt that's, that, hits, that misses to the low side is running away from the hole sooner and it's got the hill more affecting it, you know, whether it be right to left or left to right, that you'll always, hit, you'll always be much farther on missing a low putt. And keep track of that stuff and you might start saying, whoa, I mean, I almost never hit a putt high enough, so therefore if I don't hit it high enough, I got no chance to make it if it never gets, and if it never really reaches the hole at a point where it could fall in. Again, we have a couple cutting putting videos on the on the on the uh, on the website. One of them is a couple uh, putting video that I did with DJ. Then we have we have the putting secret that I did with Jack Moore. And somebody was asking about that. They said they couldn't find it on the site. Well, we got enough videos and products that that if you go to the to, to, to the uh, shopping cart and look at them, there's three pages of uh, of, of products on there. So uh, you got to click on the second page and then the third page. And I believe the the putting secret, which is what somebody wrote in and asked about, is I think it's the it's the top one on the right hand column of the of the uh, the videos that are listed on uh, page two of the shopping cart. So we got we're we're developing a lot of products here. So just go look at the bottom. There's one, two, and three pages. So the key is 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 then you have to sit down and think about your attitude. How how was I thinking? How was I talking to myself? And many times we, we're very big on on beating ourselves up about uh, oh you all the every time you need a big shot you fold like a cheap chair and stuff like that. We just pound on ourselves. Uh, and and uh, Dr. Otello made, once made one of the best comments I've ever I've ever had. And he had a tape. He had originally done an audio tape, and it said. Uh, I used to always listen to tape two, side two. It was called "Learning to Be Your Own Best Friend." He said, "He said we talk to ourselves like like we're talking to a dog who just bit us a lot of times." And he said, "Think about how would you talk to your friend or your partner if you were in a match, right? They hit a shot and they missed the green. Oh, okay, okay, you can get it up for Donnie. You got a good short game. You're a good putter. Well, we need to talk to ourselves like that. Encourage yourself. Don't beat yourself down. So bad self talk is just." puts you in the dumps and keeps you there and you're certainly not going to play good golf there. So that's another thing you need to look over. So when you have that bad turnaround and, and, and you're still in a fight so to speak or at least you want to redeem yourself and come back and, and shoot a good score the next day, you have to go over and kind of and figure out what's going on. Figure out your stats, what went wrong with your ball striking and, and how are you thinking and, and, and all the places and things that, that could be like you could be hitting the ball great, but you're still coming up short. What does that tell you? You're not hitting enough club. Or if you're hitting pretty good shots that are always missing to the right, it's time to check your alignment. All right? But then that's going back to fundamentals, doing it right. Okay? So you just can't go home and forget about it. If you want to be good and consistently good, you should think about every round. Even if you go out and play three holes or, or just a fun nine holes, you should do your stats on that because if you're trying to always play to be and play the best you can, you should, be, you should definitely be working on good fundamentals every every time set up and and which includes alignment and then making the the peak performance golf swing all right and and then stats will tell you a lot about that okay videotape yourself if you have to use your shadow to swing see if your head's moving or whatever and uh cuz as long as the sun's out you can get your shadow out there in the golf course and your shadow never lies it's your best friend it only tells you the truth and so uh do those things uh again on the golf course you're just looking to do it right your shadow could tell you really quickly what's what's wrong. If your head's moving back and forth, up and down, or both, or whatever, you can see that. You can see the front knee kicking, and you could jump on that really quick. But it's always about doing what's right. Only thinking about the proper the proper thoughts and, and the proper way to play good golf. And don't ever get down on yourself. you got to keep patting yourself on the back and giving you that pep talk, like we talked about you talking to your partner if you were playing in a partner tournament. All right? Well, that's it for the search for today on uh, coming back from a poor round. And uh, hopefully if we do all of this right, the poor rounds won't be anywhere near as bad. And uh, you'll be shooting a heck of a lot more consistent good ones. Okay, so for good self-talk, good stats, and good playing, that's it for the search for today. And I'll be talking to you all again soon.